Good morning. I hope you all had a happy 5th, 4th. Today's the 5th of July. We didn't put up no videos this week. It wasn't because of the 4th of July. Hell, we worked every day. But uh, we've been getting in here and getting started early and kind of getting through a bunch of horses and stuff. Got a lot of good work done. Uh, what we have here is Ruby Doo. She's three year old. We broke her this spring early. She got kicked out for two or three months. And uh, the owner decided they wanted to sell her. So we're going to sell her. But I got a few videos from a patron member. And it was about her horse's head being too low, or her horse was pushing on her, and things like that. And uh, so rather than trying to talk to her and explain it, I thought we would do a video on this. And I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing here. Now, Autumn, when she was here, she rode this mare. Keeley's rode this mare. As you can see, this is the mare we used in our little 4th of July deal. Autumn was out on the trail on her and kept saying she kept trying to push through her hands. She was on her hands all the time. And I remember whenever we broke her, she had a bad habit of that. Now, the mare's three now. She's, she's matured up a little bit. This mare was very immature whenever we started her. But uh, she's doing a lot better now. So, the main thing on the horses that are bracing on you, the horses that are pushing on your hands, what your number one problem is, is stiffness and pushiness. Okay? So, the first thing you need to be doing is flexing these horses until you just do it with, you know, two fingers. Get them really light here. Okay? You get them really light here. On the headset on them being too low and pushing down, a lot of that comes from stiffness throughout the body. Okay? So, and I'll give you an instance. One of Bobby Craig's buckskin colts in here, this two-year-old, the big pretty buckskin, worked him pretty hard this week. We couldn't get him to move. Keely, would you get that ball? The fan just blowed that ball right here. And luckily, my horse didn't go nuts. Uh, but the horse didn't want to go. It, it just didn't want to go nowhere. And if you kicked him, it, it just didn't mean nothing to him. He would just ignore your feet. And then if you took a quirt and got to spanking him a little bit, then he would get all flinchy and things like that. So I basically got on him and done exactly what I'm fixing to do to this horse. I went to the body, the body, the body. Look, guys, all of your problems are concentrated in the rib cage. It's the rib cage, the body, the body, the body. I just can't say that word enough. So as you all see, we've got a really light. She'll sit here and flex. She'll, she'll do all this stuff. Now what we're going to do, we're going to ask her to walk off. And notice I've got her cocked over here to the side. And see what she's doing right now? She don't, she don't like this. Why don't she like this? I'll tell you why. It's because she's damn stiff. That's why. Notice I don't even have my leg in her. I do not have my inside leg in her. I'm just sitting here cocking her head over here. And, and getting her, now she's starting to pull back to my right. So notice I'm just sitting here starting to bump that a little bit, saying, hey, hey, get back in here. Get off that. Get off that. Get off that. See, she got on it pretty hard right there. So I'm going to sit here, and I'm just going to bump on this, and lightly bump. I'm not jerking her head off. Just lightly bump. There. Get off that. When you feel a really bend good in that neck, let it go. But as long as there's pressure on that, you just sit here 
and just kind of keep flicking on that. Just lightly bumping, lightly bumping. Now, I'm starting to put my spur in her because she's slowing down and wanting to stop. Okay? There. And she's not getting off that bit. This is what I want you all to understand about that bit. As far as you're concerned, when you're riding your horse, that bit belongs to you. It does not belong to the horse. That bit is for your purposes. Whatever you want. She is not allowed to push on it. She's not allowed to pull against it. She's not allowed to do nothing. All she's allowed to do is hold it and follow wherever the pressure goes. But that bit is mine and she needs to stay off of it. Okay? So, that's what we're doing. Now, I see she kind of pulling against me. Come here. Come here. There. That was a good give right there. Now we're going to go over here and work on this right side. As long as you've got forward motion in this tight circle, you really don't have to use your inside spur. Okay? Now, if you feel her starting to slow down, then go ahead and just touch her with it. And just push. Stick it up against her and just kind of push. Push that rib cage over this way. You know, get that rib cage out of the way so that she can bend and move. That's your whole deal. And see there, she's still a little heavy in that mouth. But I promise you, if you'll do this, it will change your horse completely on how they travel and the way they travel. Right there. Now, we're going to get out here and I'm just going to drop my reins and let her go. Now, when I turn sideways here, you're going to see where her head is. Her head's down, well it was. It's just kind of coming straight out here. Now, if she was to go to pushing down, if she was to go pushing down, right here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to pick her up, and I'm going to bend her. And say, hey, see there? Look at the stiffness there. There you go, right there. See there? Did you all see how that nose come out? She was trying to get over that bit. When I had her head cocked and was trying to get her to bend on around, she raised up. Okay, when she raised up, this whole side got stiff. It got hard. And I just kind of bumped it just a little bit more firm until I got her to give. All right? Now, headset. This is actually working on a horse. And see, she's not even listening. I'm asking her to go over here. And she just ignored me. I can't stand for a horse to ignore me. If they don't know, that's fine. I'll show them. But see there? She's pulling on me right now. Get over here. Get off that. Get off that. Right there. Now. Now, as far as headset goes, let me get back on that. I don't care, really, how high or how low. Now, I don't want this, face, this head up here in my face, and I don't want it dragging the ground. But if she'll travel like this right here and not touch my hands, not touch my hand with that bit, I don't care. If she don't touch my hand with the bit, if she stays here between my hands and my legs, that's fine. We're trail riding. We're trail riding. Okay? Now, with that said, here we go again. I do believe when she was two, we done a video on her because she was kind of bad to stick her nose out. And I believe I was in the middle of the barn, 
and Sissy was riding her, and I was having Sissy pick her up and get that chin. Now, see, I'm picking her up. What'd she do? She nosed out. Now, I'm not pulling no harder. I'm going to hold that there until she got off my hand. I hope you all was able to see that. Let me get up here, and we're going to do it again on this backup. I'm going up here about chest high, and I'm just holding it. Now her nose is out. I'm not turning that loose. I don't care if she's backing up or not. She's going to get soft in my hands. And that face is going to get in here before I turn that loose. Softening the chin. Softening the chin. Softening the, the pole, the neck, all this stuff. The softer you get this mare, the better she's going to travel. And if she'll pay attention and stop stumbling around here, They'll get the gawking off on you. So I'll get a little bit more aggressive with it right here. Come on. Go forward. Now you want to watch when you do this. You notice we're going forward and around. Do you notice that the front end, the back end is following the front end? Okay? Wherever the front end goes, that's where the rear end's going. Sometimes... They'll want to shut the front end down and have the rear end just walk around. Or sometimes they'll stop the rear end and just move the front end around. I want the entire body going forward. 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 I want her to go forward. And I want her to stay soft here. Forward. And, and you don't need to do this no faster starting out. You might need to do this for a few days. At this speed, till you get it where you just put a thread on that and pick it up and she'll give that head around here. Right there. Right there. That's what I'm wanting. Right here. Come here. Get over here. Okay? On the abrasiveness and things like that, this is stage one. On dropping the head too low and things like this. This right here. Notice I'm, I'm going to the ceiling with this. I'm picking her up. There you go. Right over here. Right over here. There you go. Now, if you're riding her and she drops her head and you're loose and she hits that bit and goes to pushing down, here's what you do. I'm riding along here and she ain't going to do it. But if you're riding along here, and she starts pushing that head down, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to come right here and I'm going to snatch her up. Say, hey, get up here. Stop gawking off. Stop gawking off. And do you notice? We do not have the ultimate softness. Because every time I swap sides, she wants to raise that right there. See there? She wants to get over that bit. And I just sit there and I just keep bump, bump, bump. Say, no, get it back down here. Now, if you'll see right there, I didn't even bump her that time. Let's see what she does this way. See there? And all I'm doing is just jiggling it. I'm really not bumping it. I'm just kind of jiggling that. Okay? Now we're starting to get some softness here. Now, whenever I walk her straight, and I'm going to want to turn here to my left. And what does she do? She kind of pushed down and wanted to push against me and ignore turning left. Okay? So I just snatch her up. Say, hey, follow your damn nose. Follow your nose right here. Now, I'm going to ask her to go left again. Looky there. You see how she went ahead and bent to the left? Now there's a little bit of pressure there, so I'm just going to bump just lightly. She put half pressure back on my hand, so I'm going to bump lightly. Notice how big this circle's starting to get. I want to walk straight and go left. And I expect your nose to come over here. I expect your nose to come over here whenever I do that. So I'm going to reprimand her here a little bit. She knows to follow her nose. But instead, she just ignores me. Well, you keep ignoring me and I'll keep reminding you. And notice I'm not doing it really severely. 
There you go. There you go. See how soft that was that time? Guys, you can't be pussyfooting around with these. Be clear on what you're asking. Have a plan. If they're not doing what you ask them, then you say, okay, if you're not going to go the way the pressure is pulling, then I'm going to make you go. And we're not spurring, we're not gouging. I'm not trying to jerk your head off. I'm lightly bumping, bumping. Bump, bump, bump. There you go. And, I, and, and see, you can sit here and flex her like this. Look at this. Got just two fingers. Right here is two more fingers. Okay? Always remember what I say. With speed comes stiffness. Now, when I say the word speed, y'all think about up, going forward as hard as you can go. No. No. The, the speed right there was zero. Now it's went up to about two miles an hour. That's why she was kind of ignoring me. Because she had going forward on her mind. So if I was going faster, it would actually be worse. Okay? Look, guys, this is all baby steps. Baby steps. Come around here. Stay off my hand. When you feel the feel come over here to the left, you need to be dropping your head, bending, and coming around here. Okay? And like I said, if you're riding right here, and she went to push down on my hands, I'm almost going to snatch her up here a little bit. Almost as if I was doing an emergency stop, except I'm encouraging her to keep going forward and saying, hey, come over here. Now I'm going to come over here. Now I'm going to come over here. And another thing you can do is do a lot of figure eights at the walk. Okay? This is going to determine if the horse will follow the field and follow her nose. See, I'm just tipping her nose in here. Look where her body's going now. It's going right after that nose. I know that sounds very basic, but look, guys, if she can't follow her nose, how's she going to follow anything else? How's she going to follow the field? Because the nose and the field's the same way because I'm picking up over here, going here, come over here. Okay? Now, I'm going to come over here, and now I'm going to pick up, and I'm going to go right. Now, if she wanted to ignore me, whenever I come over here to the right, or if she, she wants to put pressure on this right rein, I'm going to snatch her up and sit here and move her around. Say, so, hey, you get off that. You get off that. You just go with it. I want her to go with it in a fluid motion. She's given me the slightest amount that I can feel her on that rein. That's why I'm not getting excited. I'm just sitting here bending her around. Just don't go crazy. Just sit here and bump her. This way. Very nice. Very nice. All right, now. Here's you the next thing. We need to get her up in frame. Up in frame. When I say frame, the word frame and one up or balancing one up, getting one in balance. <clears throat> Your horse has got to be in balance in order to carry itself, carry the saddle, and carry me. They've got to have balance about them. So what I'll do, now that we've got that, and it's, and it's pretty good, so what I want to do is I want to be able to look down my horse's neck. If you look right now, you can't hardly see an eye. Okay? If her head's just hanging straight, I want you to get on your horse, get their neck coming out straight, and see if you can see an eye. You can't. That means they're straight. 
So what I want to do is pick this up where I could just barely see that eyeball. And see, don't be worrying about what they're doing down there. That's another problem you'll have with your horses. They're worried about everything else going on instead of you setting up here. They're going to have to get focused on you. Because if they're not focused on you, you can't do nothing. See there? Don't worry about him down there. Okay? Come here. Get over here. So, I want to get her head tilted. That's too much. Where I can just barely see her eye. Now I'm going to drop my left hand down here and just hold it. And I'm going to pick up on my right. Now I can see her eye right there. Now I'm going to ask her to go forward in that position and I'm sticking in my right spur and I'm shoving this front end around. Now this mare has had this done to her before. That's why that's so easy. Now, she's not too bad. What you're doing is you're getting that face. You're getting her vertical while she's twisted and moving the opposite direction. And you don't want her pushing on your hands when you do this. If she went to pushing on my hands, I'm not letting her out of this. Let her start walking forward. Now, we're going to drop the left hand, pick up the right, apply the right spur, and just push. And just push. See, there she's pushing on my hands. Notice where the nose is. Notice I didn't turn loose. I'm going to keep this right here, right there, until she gets soft. And whenever she was holding that nose out, I was just lightly bumping, and I was taking this spur and just pushing it about as hard as I could. I didn't jam her. I didn't hook her. I just pushed and let her feel the intensity of that. And that's whenever the head come back down. Okay? Here we go again. Come here. Go forward. Now, come around. See there? She wants to pick it up again. Right here. Right here. This is also called suppling. Which means having a horse moving gracefully while bent. There's a lot of things going on with this exercise. But it will change the way your horse travels. It will teach your horse to get up and move. And I'm going to tell you one reason why. Just like on the dollar horse down here. You could sit here and spur him. And he would absolutely ignore you. And he wouldn't go. When I got his head pulled around and got him going forward, I would take this spur and stick my toe straight out and stick that in him and just roll it. Okay? Look, I would just keep applying pressure with that, applying pressure to that rib cage until he got to where he would respect that spur. Because I could really, he couldn't do nothing, he couldn't buck, he couldn't take off. He couldn't do none of that. But he'd sit there and have to take that spur and try to figure out what that spur meant. And then whenever I would squeeze and ask him to go, he'd get on up there. We had the best walk we ever had on him after two months. Smoke and Dollar are here an extra month this, this, this training session. Usually in 60 days, they're ready to go. We talked to the owner about it. Neither one of them had made me happy. They were just slow coming along horses. Which I've had a background with those horses and where they come from. I know what they are. You cannot rush through them. That's why the lady that sells them gets herself in trouble a lot of times. Because they've just pushed those colts through and those colts haven't had a chance to digest it. They're a little bit slow. They're slow trainers. So you just got to take your time with them until you can get it. And you're going to have to pull out every arsenal in your toolbox to do it. And then hone your skills on those tools that you have to really get it right. So now we're going to sit here. And I'll let her sit here and think about it. 
There. Come on. Now, do y'all notice we're about halfway around and she hasn't stuck that nose up this time? And yet she's been going forward. Right there. That's what I'm wanting. We just sat here and done a complete circle. That nose never come up one time. Guys, it has to do with timing and feel. Timing and feel. Timing and feel. The only way you're going to get timing and feel is hours sitting in here doing this stuff. Hours sitting in here doing this stuff. I'm going to give you an example of it. You know, in all businesses, you have competition. Competition likes to talk. Some of my competition says that I spend way too much time in this barn and not out on the trail. That's fine. I, I might give you that. Here's what happens, though, when I do take my horses out on the trail. They go. They're not worried about it. There's no fights. I might have to get off every now and then and send them, but for the most part, my colt's head's down, and they're going where I'm telling them to go. Okay. Look, guys, in order to get a trail horse finished, you must take him on the trail. You must. But in order to have a great trail horse, you have got to spend the time in here doing the foundation work on your trail horse. Because anybody can ride one for 18 miles. A monkey can do that. But the question is, what does that colt know whenever he gets back? I want my horses soft. Where I'm sitting here on her, I pick up my hand over this way, I apply my leg, and she starts stepping over and going forward. That's what I want. Now, if you just ride, 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 you're not going to get that. Whenever I come up to a tree and there's a place in the trail there where two trees are coming out and you've got to go between them, I don't like my knee scraped on either side of those trees. That's why whenever I stick this foot in, I want my horse to get over. I want my horse to get over. Right here. Come here. Get over here. There you go. See how light that is? There you go. That's what I'm wanting. I don't know if this will all help you much, but I wanted to shoot this video because I'm wanting to do more and more in the saddle exercises to make your horse better and talk to you more about what I'm doing. But with the way things has been here, the, the time allotments had not had it, and we've had 108, 110 degree days. That makes it even worse. So anyway, I hope this helps you. If you have any questions about this, feel free to call us back.